blessings to uh, to everybody. Come on in. Come on in. On my way to the weight room, just sitting here mellowing out on some jazz. I love jazz. I love jazz. I think it's mentally and emotionally therapeutic. Go ahead and invite your followers for those of you that are coming in. Uh, if you're sitting in the sanctuary at this time, you may want to kind of raise a finger and excuse yourself for a minute. Just got something I want to drop in your spirit. Praise the Lord, everybody. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and invite your followers for those of you that are that are here. If you're here, go ahead and invite your followers. And as I said before, if you're sitting inside of a sanctuary, you might want to kind of throw up a church finger and excuse yourself for a minute. Uh, just got something. <laughs> That's got something I want to drop in your spirit. Something you may not even hear in church. At at 54 years of age, that's that's how old I am. That's how old I am. At 54 years of age, I've discovered that Christian people are some of your most judgmental people, if not the most. And I tell people all the time, I was I was literally born in the church. You know, people, you kind of say that and people look at you like you're crazy. Because my my father, my father, my father was pastoring for a very long time. I was almost conceived in the church. But as long as I have uh, I have attended. Uh, church, I've, I've discovered that that Christian people are some of your most judgmental people, um, if not the most judgmental group in the earth, because we are we are always passing opinions on something or someone without having prior knowledge. Christian people are the most prejudiced people in the earth. And, and, and prejudiceness has nothing to do with color. It has nothing to do with white, black, green, orange, purple, or yellow. But when I say when I say that Christian people are your most prejudiced people, prejudiceness is when you pass an opinion concerning something without having prior knowledge of what you're passing an opinion concerning. Prejudiceness is 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 when you it is when you when, when you look at that word prejudice, it is made up of the prefix pre and the word judge, prejudge. Prejudiceness is when you prejudge something without prior knowledge. So Christians are your are your are, are the most prejudiced group. Because we're always judging something without having knowledge of what we're judging. If 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 you if you understand what I'm saying, type in a number one. We we're, we're we're always judging something without having prior knowledge of what we are of what we're judging. Um, of course, everybody, everybody in the kingdom 
every supposedly man of God and every supposedly woman of God are passing their opinions concerning what is happening with, with Kanye West. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has a word. And someone walked up to me one day and they said, listen, I've got, I've got a question for you. What do you think about this Kanye situation? As, as a man of God in whom, and, and they said this to me, they said, as, as a man of God in whom I, I respect, as a man of God in whom I, I admire, as a man of God in whom I honor, um, I, I just want to kind of get your I want to kind of get your your word on this um, per se. What do you think about this Kanye situation? And I had to say to them, I do not have an earthly opinion about spiritual things. And, and, and he kind of just looked at me as if he was looking for me to say more. He, his, his question was, what is, what is your opinion? What is your opinion um, about this Kanye situation? And I simply said to the man of God, I said, man, listen, I do not have earthly opinions about spiritual things. And I believe that that ought to be every man of God's and every woman of God's response to something that they just don't understand. You, you, don't, you don't understand it? Why are you giving an opinion concerning something that you really don't have insight on? genuine, prolific, spiritual, or divine insight on? Why, 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 are you, why are you judging something that you really don't understand? All of our response, when you don't understand something, should be, hey, listen, I, I don't have an earthly opinion concerning, concerning spiritual, spiritual things. Um, I, I can say this, and I shared this once before uh, on Periscope when, when this situation uh, transpired uh, in, in its epic um, months ago, uh, weeks ago, I should say. I, uh, I, I kind of talked about this and, and addressed this. Uh, Uh, pretty much even before, uh, I, I could say, even before the situation even transpired, um, the Lord spoke to me and, and God said to me that I am anointing the Davids in this hour. In this hour. I'm, I'm anointing the Davids in, in this hour. And, and please hear me, don't, don't get it twisted, you know, because I know how church folk like to gossip, you know, you know, you know, Gossip is kind of when you hear one thing and, and, and you perceive what you want to get out of it and, and you go and tell folk everything but what the man said, you know, everything but what the woman said. I, I want you to have an understanding that, that I, I am in no wise saying that Kanye West is a typology of a modern day David. I'm, I am in no wise saying that he is, but I'm also in no wise saying that he's not. I'm going to leave that up to God. Are you with me? Um, when I say what I'm about to say, I, I am not saying in no wise that Kanye West is a modern day David. 
but I also want you to understand that I am in no wise saying that he's not. I'm leaving that up to God. I'm doing what many of you who are passing judgment on this situation should do. Leave it up to God. But the Lord said to me, the Lord said to me, he says, I am raising up modern day Davids in this day and in this hour. I, I am, I am, I am anointing Davids. And when the Lord said what he said, my question to God was, what do you mean you're anointing modern day Davids? Uh, David was a praiser. David was a worshiper. Uh, David was a warrior. Are you are you raising up modern day praisers? Are you raising up modern day worshipers? Are you raising up modern day warriors? And then God took me to the book of First Samuel, chapter sixteen, where the prophet Samuel goes to the house of Jesse to anoint Israel's next king. Uh, and of course, for those of us in whom are intimate and familiar with the text, uh, you do know that when the prophet Samuel goes to the house of Jesse to anoint Israel's next king, uh, Jesse has a totality of eight sons, but he only brings out seven. Uh, and of course, the seven in whom Jesse brings out for the prophet Samuel to anoint were those in whom Jesse thought looked like kings. Uh, they were those in whom Jesse thought act like kings. They were those in whom Jesse thought had the aroma of a king. They had the presence of a king. They smelled like kings. They had the communication and articulation of, of a king. They, they talked like kings. But for those of us in whom are intimate with the text, if you remember in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16, right about verse 7, God says this to the prophet Samuel in going to the house of Jesse. He says, listen, look not on his countenance or on the height of his statue." In other words, when going to the house of Jesse to anoint Israel's next king, do not judge the man in whom I am going to anoint by externals. Are you with me? When going to the house of Jesse, God says, to anoint Israel's next king, do not look upon externals. Don't look upon people or sons that look like kings, walk like kings, act like kings, have the conversation of a king, the ambiance of a king, smells like a king. And then God continues to say, because I have refused him. I have refused him. Do not look upon those that look like the anointing. Because even those that look like it, God says, I, I have refused him. For the Lord, here it is, seeth not as man sees. For man looketh upon the outward appearance. Hey, Prophet is Amy, blessings to you. Uh, Rhonda, good to see you. For man looketh upon the outward appearance. Watch this now. But God does what? Come on, Bible readers. But God looks upon the heart. God says, God says, when you go to Jesse's house to anoint Israel's next king, watch this now. You will not anoint the man who looks like He's anointed. See, we, we want to put our hands on everybody that looks like God. God says, in this hour, I'm raising up folk that don't look like me. 
I'm raising up folk that don't act like me. I'm raising up folk that don't walk. I'm raising up folk that don't smell like me. But watch this now. But me going to be all over them. <laughs> you, you get me? You get me? I'm, I'm raising up folk that don't look anointed. But the anointing will be all over them. Um, I'm raising up folk to some of you all that don't act anointed because watch this now. Watch this. I'm raising up folk that don't act anointed because you're judging them by their externals. But the anointing is going to be all over them. I'm raising up folk. I'm raising up folk. Watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. God says, I'm raising up folk in this hour. Watch this, that you church folk are going to have problems with. Kingdom people won't have problems because they understand. They Kingdom people will not have problems with those in whom I'm going to anoint in this hour because they understand Isaiah 55 and 8. They understand that my thoughts are not their thoughts and my ways are not their ways. And so as the heavens are higher than the earth, so as my ways higher than their ways and my thoughts are higher than their thoughts. Kingdom people are not going to have a problem with whom I raise up because they understand Isaiah 55 and 8. They understand that my ways are not their ways and my thoughts are not their thoughts. I don't think like they think. I don't do like they do. They understand this. They understand that, that I'm an unorthodox kind of God. Y'all do know that God is unorthodox. What, what does that mean? That simply means that God does not operate within the peripherals and the parameters of your box. He operates outside the box. God doesn't think inside the box. He thinks outside the box. God doesn't think within the parameters of the four walls of the church. He thinks outside of the parameters and the peripherals and the radius of the four walls of the church because God is an unorthodox God. Nothing God does makes sense. What, what what does it mean? What does it mean to be what does it mean to be unorthodox? Unorthodox simply means that nothing that God does makes sense. Some of you all have a problem with what may be happening in the life of Kanye West because it just doesn't make sense with all these Christian folk out here why would God raise up Kanye West it's not your business see could it could it be could it be that God is seeing a part of Kanye West that you don't have the ability to see are you with me I'm gonna say that again I say could it be that God sees a part of Kanye West that you do not have the ability to see. Because remember what God said to the prophet Samuel as he's going to the house of Jesse to anoint Israel's next king in 1 Samuel chapter 16, right about verse 7. He says, God seeth not as man sees, for man looks upon the outward appearance, but God does what? God looks upon the heart. See, could it be that God sees a part of Kanye West that no man of God and no woman of God in the earth has the ability to see? You all are judging him by how he talks and what he does outwardly. Are you with me? But, but God is judging who he is inwardly. Let me say something. Let me say something to some of you holier than thou folk. Let me let me say something. Let me say something for some of you holier than thou folk. Some of you Sadducees and in 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 Pharisees in spirit. If it were for God judging you if it were for God judging you 
the way you judge other people, you would be going straight to hell. I'm talking to some of you. That that's yep, that's exactly what I said. I'm gonna say it again too, just in case you missed it. I'm on I'm gonna say it again, just in case you missed it and you didn't get it. If it was, if God judged you the way you judged other people, some of you all, or many of you all, the majority of you all would be going straight to hell. You would be. You would be. You would be. Listen, take your mouth off of what you don't understand. Uh, listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna get Jesus on you. Can can I get Jesus on you? I'm 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 gonna get I'm gonna get Jesus on you. Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Guess what? Every last one of you all that are alive, every last one of you all that are going to catch the replay would have to walk away. You you wouldn't have a stone to throw. Let let he, I'm going to get Jesus on you. Let, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. And reality is this. I can't throw one. Nor can you. Because every last one of us have some skeletons in our closet. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Stop being so prejudiced. Stop formulating opinions concerning people whereby you have no prior knowledge of. Stop, stop being so opinionated about everything when you know absolutely nothing. Stop being so judgmental. Stop gossiping about folks. Start praying for folk. Stop judging people. Start praying for people. I got a problem. I got a problem with more folk in the church than I do in the world. I do. I got a problem. I had a problem with a whole lot of you Christian folk. I got a, I got a problem with a whole lot of you. Because you're always pointing the finger. And my mom used to always say, when I was a young boy, I remember my mom used to always say, son, don't ever point fingers. Because when you point one finger at somebody else, you got about 50 people pointing the finger right back at you. Because reality is this, you're no better. You're no better. You're, 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 no, you're no better. You want to think you are. You want to act like you are. You want to talk like, but you are no better. You're no better. <laughs> y'all don't, 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 see, y'all don't want to be real. That's your problem. That's your problem. You're, you're no better. You're no better. You're no better. Well, you know, you, I mean, the kind of stuff that he does, you know, the kind of sins that he commit, listen, ain't no sin no greater than the other. My dad used to always say at the cross, the ground is level. Ain't no sin no greater than the other. Your sin ain't better than his because in your mind, it seems worse your sins are not better than somebody else's sins because in your mind, what they did is a whole lot worse than what you did. Listen, sin is sin. There's no point scale, no Richter scale where sin is concerned. You know, lying is a two, but adultery is a 50. Sin is sin, is sin, is sin, is sin. Ain't no little white sins. And terrible black sins. Sin is sin. Your sin ain't no better than anybody else's. In God's eyes, it's a sin. Stop judging. 
start praying. For those of you who haven't, you should have been praying already. These folk get me tell me it's time to pray. It's been time to pray. You should have been already praying. What you're talking about is time to pray. The Bible says pray without ceasing. It ain't time. It's been time. You should have been praying. Stop judging. Start praying. Somebody say, y'all quiet now. <laughs> Stop judging. I'm out of here. Start praying. Serious. On, on a, listen, I'm laughing, but on a serious note. Stop judging people. Because reality is this. You are no better than they. I'm out.